All right, so as you can see here, my hands disappeared. I probably should have done this on camera. But right now you're gonna take your sheet of paper, uh, t paper towel, take about half, I would say, and ball it, put it into a little ball. So you're gonna bunch it up, take that shady color, and dab onto where the dark areas meet the light areas, if that makes sense. We gotta blend these two areas together because sand is super grainy and not smooth. So to add some texture, we're gonna dab, dab, dab into the light and dark areas. If you feel like your painting is looking a little too smudgy, you may have built up a little too much paint on your paper towel. So feel free to get a new paper towel or bunch it up in a different direction again. You could also add some of the shady color to other areas of sand to give it more texture. So right now, as you can see, I'm slowly building up that texture onto the lighter colors and the original shady color. This does take some time, but you will get there, I promise. Have faith in your abilities. You just gotta keep dab, dab, dabbing. Hello again. So, just to prepare yourself for what I'm about to do now, I'm taking a little bit more black to make an even darker shade of my tan color with what was left of the um, previous shade of sand. This is to give it more of a shadow effect of where the turtles were. So you're gonna do the same thing that we did before, add a little black. You could use your paintbrush, you don't have to, but essentially I'm gonna do the paper towel technique again and dab it along the way. But not everywhere this time, only select places. So I would say the areas that are closest to the turtles should be darker. And anywhere that you want it to seem like the sand is deeper in some places, if that makes sense. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the turtles after you've finished filling in the sand. All you need for the base color is the color black or whatever color you want your turtles to be. I'm using the leftover paint that I had from the sand color, so we're not wasting any paint. And you're just gonna fill in the turtle. Okay, so as you can see, I'm finishing up filling in the black. This next part is completely optional, but I decided to add a little bit more detail into my turtles by mixing yellow and blue to make green. And I'm just gonna take the paper towel and my paintbrush, add a little black, um, and dab it onto the turtle. So I'm not filling it in, but I'm just doing little, little dots or 
little splotches around the turtle. Just to indicate where the shell would be, give a little more depth to the, the head of the turtle and the arms and the legs. So again, this next part is completely optional, but another way that you could dress up your turtle is to take the color white, grab a couple of Q-tips, and do a very, very, very lightly pressured outline around the turtle's body, their head, their shell, their legs, their arms, that kind of thing. You don't have to put too much pressure onto the Q-tip because it will kind of glob up. So I was just very lightly doing some line work on the turtle. Alright, so that wraps it up for our turtle. Let's move on to the water. For our base, we're going to start with the blue paint. Next to it, mix some green by mixing some yellow and blue. I'm using the leftover that I had from my turtles. Depending on how seafoam blue you want it to be, um, feel free to experiment. The ocean can be as blue or green or whatever color you're feeling. Just like what we did with the different shades of tan for the sand, we're going to make three to four colors or variations for the ocean, have an itty bit of black for our darkest ocean shade, your base color, um, and then two sections with more of white for a lighter shade and an even lighter shade that will be our sea foam color. Um, but you can hold off on that very, very light color until we get to that part. So right now I'm just mixing the base color and I'm putting some aside for our darkest color and then taking whatever's left into the shade of white to make that middle. Okay, and then what I'm doing here is I'm adding another section of white, and that's going to be our lightest color that we'll use um, at the end to make the sea foam at the edges of the waves. And like what I did to make the middle uh, blue color, I just took my paintbrush that already had some blue and mixed it in with the white. So just remember when you're mixing these colors, Kind of what I said for when we were making the colors for the sand. Um, and when you're making the darkest shade, you're going to add a little bit of black into your base paint section. So make a separate section of the base paint so you don't make all darker colors. Um, and then add a little black into it because if you add, start with black, you'll never reach um, that blue color again. For the lighter shades, start with white and then add your base color into it. Like I said earlier, darker colors are more overpowering than the lighter colors. So once you have your paints, start filling in your ocean. Think about what kind of day it is on your beach. Is it sunny? Where is the sun facing? That'll give you an idea of where your lighter color will be. Again, think about the waves. Are they crashing into the shore? Are there many ripples in the waves? You could start by mimicking that outline that you made um, of that three and the little loops. That's kind of what I'm doing here just to give you an idea. I kept some of the darker shades of blue closer to the shoreline and then the lighter away as if the sun was like coming from the area far away from the shore. I don't know. It's really up to you. 
Um, I know some of you guys have had questions in the past, paint nice, like, how do you get water to look like that? Or how can I paint water? I just do long, lin like, long strokes of paint. And then I add layers of the varying colors on top of it. So think of it of like lines. So you don't necessarily have to fill in one block of color. You could do multiple colors, multiple lines. Show the, the brush strokes. And then I just added like another shape within my waves just to give it give it more depth. And then as you can see here, I added that lighter color in. And then probably gonna go back in with the darker colors too. But like I said, it's whatever you want your waves to look like. I will say though, if you are painting along with me and, you, and you're using acrylic paints, um, the good thing about these paints, especially for beginners, is that if you give it time to dry, you could just go right over anything you want to fix. If you want to blend your colors, I would say apply the different colors while it's still wet. But if you want like things like the lighter colors to show on top of your darker colors, wait a couple seconds, minutes, and then paint on top of it. Okay, so when you finish this part, we're gonna work on the sea foam. Take a paper towel, this time crumple it into a very, very, very small ball. Take the lighter colors and just dab, dab, dab it along the edge of the ocean wave coming in. There is no real rhyme or reason to a specific way of doing this. Um, I just went along the edge of my wave. But you could just do what you feel like you want your waves to look like coming in. I will say less is more sometimes, so don't feel obliged to keep adding just because you feel like you didn't do a lot to it. Like right here, I probably could have stopped. but. You know, you don't have to stop. And then the more um, you layer on top, it does give a very cool effect of the foamy part. I also went within the waves on top too. And it looks, you know, pretty cool. So when I was doing this, I made sure that I didn't have a lot of paint on uh, my paper towel. That gives it that, like, see-through effect, if that makes sense. And then what you could also do, which I'll do next, um, if you take that Q-tip again and take um, the lighter color, you could add little bubbles to your sea foam. All right, so that's it. If we were on having paint night on campus and I had the supplies, I was planning on getting some sand and some seashells to add on top. So if you wanna do something like that too, feel free to. Um, feel free to add any extra things that you feel like would look pretty, but I kinda like mine as it is. And that's all I have to. Um, once the painting is dry, don't forget to initial the bottom so the world knows that you painted this. Hang it up. Show everybody, send me and everyone a pick in Slack to show us your masterpiece, whether you use paint, colored pencils, or whatever you could get your hands on. If you guys liked this virtual paint night, let me know if you want another one. We could do the tree with the four seasons that Brianna and Anna really wanted. Or Emily suggested the koi fish painting. Um, those pictures, if you can't remember, um, are in the Google survey that I had sent out originally for this paint night um, in case you couldn't remember what they look like. Uh, again, I hope you guys had fun, missed seeing your beautiful faces, and hopefully we will see each other soon. All right, take care. Bye.